Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys and welcome to another video of Diamond Trading. My name is Daniel and today guys we're looking at what's happening at the moment. Okay, a lot of, I say a lot of people, a few people have asked me what's my opinion on the, on the, the situation at the moment we have on the stock market. Uh, what's my way forward, what's my plans. Um, so let's have a little bit of a look uh, at this. I'm going to give you my tips and tricks. Uh, again, I'm not a financial advisor, so everything I say on this is my own opinion, and I hopefully it will help you to um, to have your own point of view as well. So take on what I'm saying, listen to a lot of other people, the uh, uh, investors, uh, professional investors as well, uh, and take this all on board. Not just listening, but reading as well. Uh, we need to do that. Uh, yeah, every day we need to learn. We always, we never stop learning, so it's important to learn. Um, so I'm learning, and I'm hopefully on this journey. I am showing you uh, the way as well, which will guide you through the right direction. Uh, first of all, just want to say thank you for all these subscribers that I'm having. This is absolutely amazing. This is really great. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone uh, 656 subscribers absolutely great so happy uh, run about 20 days ago I only had 61 subscribers now if you go back 60 if you go back 20 days on the 4th of February so 20 days ago so on the 4th of February I made a, view, a video that actually only has 33 views okay it's a shame I wish there were more but if you go into it uh, it says it's a video that has 33 views and it says my strategy plan and plans for 2021 and I felt what we're, disc we're experiencing at the moment I felt that something like this was coming so uh, it, you'll understand what I mean so if you go back and watch that video you'll find it interesting because it will go in function of my tips and tricks uh, which I taught you at the end so let's get into it. Let's have a look and let's have a look at what we've prepared for today. Hopefully you find it interesting. First of all, uh, market corrections. This is what we're going to look at. Market corrections. There were, okay. So market correction is what we're going, uh, going through at the moment. A slight market correction. Uh, since 1920, the S&P 500 index has on average recorded a 5% pullback three times a year, a 10% correction once every 16 months, and a 20% plunge every seven years, according to Fidelity Investments. Okay, Corrections have lasted an average of 43 days. In 2020, the coronavirus pandemic rocked the stock market, sending it another into another bear market but within five months S&P had made a full recovery and was setting new high records high <clears throat> okay so that's a that's a market correction we've actually have three types of corrections which I say is three types of adjustments so the first one is a market correction which normally is it, well which is around about 10 percent so the, the market will drop the whole market will drop about 10 percent then we have a, a bear market which is 20 percent Okay, and then anything greater than a 20%, so 20% up to 80 90% is then a stock market crash. Okay, so those are the sort of three adjustments, should we say. Uh, so the time and the damage of each one is different. Okay, so if we have a look at a bear market, a bear market is, uh, is a bit more deeper. Okay, uh, like I said, 20%, and the time for correction is substantially longer okay with a market correction time can be anything like three weeks three months so it said 46 days but if we go back for example in september in september 2020 we had a market correction uh, as well uh, and that lasted like three weeks if we go back to the pandemic back in march uh, that lasted less than three months and everything went sky high again. So just to give you an idea, these are the sort of uh, situations that we see ourselves. It depends. Every situation is is different. Uh, so a bear market is a bit more deeper, is deeper and has more impactful issues that could be lasting, like the, the common economic crises, rather than just a handle handful of disappointing uh, economic data reports. So um, 
there are other fundamentals that we need to look at. The other key underline, when I say underline, they're underline because they normally get parked and ignored and put to the side, but we do see it in the news, but a lot of people tend to ignore it. But we have a look at our uh, unemployment uh, issues, uh, interest rates, okay? Uh, there are other points, like, for example, printing money. Okay, trillions and trillions of dollars like the states have been printing uh, this is not good okay sooner or later this is going to backfire okay getting the uh, governments getting themselves more into debt and just printing money is not the solution uh, so th there's a lot of factors that you could probably do another th one hour two hour video on which I'm not going to go into detail but there are other underlying factors uh, if we have a look at the companies that are overvalued at the moment in, for example, let's just take for example Tesla. Uh, if someone asked you what's the PE ratio, PE ratio of Tesla, uh, you would need to understand and, and and answer that question. If you can't answer that question, you have to think to yourself, I need to learn more, because uh, these are the sort of things we need to start looking at. How much is a company uh, valued uh, or overvalued? Uh, it's it's going it's, it's a bubble. It's going to explode. Uh, soon so these are sort of things we need to look at so anyway so those are the sort of different types of markets and uh, I'm going to give you now my opinion um, or my tips and tricks I use for myself you can take it aboard or you cannot it's completely up to you but hopefully you find these five top tips that have useful for you the first one is do not panic do not panic and now do not panic it, it is it actually depends on what type of person you're talking to if you've just come into the in the investment world in the last couple of weeks and you've taken your 500 quid, your 700 dollars, or your 1,000 dollars, and you've stuck it all on volatile stocks, uh, then panic. Okay. Here goes on to point two. This goes hand in hand. If you have a diversified portfolio, you shouldn't have to panic. Okay, because you believe in those companies. Uh, as I've mentioned to you many times before, um, some will say that is too much. I agree. People will say it's too much. But I have 10% of my less than now, le now less than 10%. Until last week, I had more, uh, right about 10%, just over 10% of my stocks in penny stocks. But I got in and out quick and made some money. Uh, and then I have others that I have today right now that I'm holding on for the long term because I believe something is there, but they don't have the fundamentals. Having said that, I have all my other portfolios okay, uh, that will cover me, uh, will help me uh, stabilize in, in the long term. Okay, so um, you look at your, your, for example, your, your, your apples, for example, have you look at your apples, your NVIDIAs, have a look at your uh, Nokias, I'm going to say Nokias as an example, because I still think they're a solid company for the long term, I've said it a hundred times, your Nokia, um, so these are the sort of your blue chip companies, should we say, um, your blue chip companies, you will have that correction, but it will be quite stable uh, in the long term, because you still believe and you've done your your research, okay, which comes on to the next point, do you own uh, diligence due diligence or your own research okay it actually helps and goes on to number four which i say is listen to advice and various read various sources now listen to people and it's good they could be wrong they could be right but you need to listen to everyone okay you cannot stereotype someone because you think that that's the way they now listen to what they have to say i mean we're in this world to listen to what everyone has to say and sometimes you can get probably one percent out of something that you don't like but at least that takes you uh, takes you from going to where you are now to where you can go in the future so the more we listen and and see from other people uh, we can learn even if it's mistakes okay I've said this a hundred times uh, to succeed in life you have to fail a lot of times so that's just the way it is and that's how it is Okay, I've just recently learned I shouldn't be risking so much in penny stocks. I went over that 10% market, 10%. And that was always my rule, and I went over. So I've actually cut it back. Okay, I've cut it back. Boom, I got in, made money, and I'm happy I've made money. Okay, so um, yeah. Last point here is uh, putting cash aside. Now, putting cash aside is not easy for a lot of people, and I understand that. 
but uh, you need to take advantage of what's happening in these sort of situations because let's say you had, for example, a company that you wanted a, a few months ago that you considered overvalued and they've just dropped in price, they're now a bargain. Now is a good time to take that cash you've had to, to bump in. Okay. Generally, you shouldn't be selling. You shouldn't be selling unless you've you've restudied that company and you see that they're in a difficult position, and it's not going to be good for the long term. Then you then you sell. Having said that, if you've dropped, it's a good time to cost dollar, uh, dollar cost in. Okay, so the company. Let's just say you've bought this company uh, a couple of weeks ago or a few months ago, whenever, and it was at forty dollars, and now it's at thirty. That's actually a bargain. So if you thought forty dollars was quite a good price, and you've seen a price target in the next few years of seventy, get it at thirty. Put money, get put, pump money into it. So that's the reason why you should put cash aside uh, to help us do that. And in fact, I've done that uh, recently and I've actually sold off things uh, that I were really quite skeptical about. Um, I didn't have any fundamentals, but I sold, I sold them. So some I sold for a profit and actually some I sold for a loss. I have to admit, you, don't, you win some and you lose some. But it's helped me to take to put some cash into my conviction company, should we say, uh, that I believe in in the, in the long term. So guys, that's my uh, view on things. That's my tips and tricks. Uh, again, thank you very much for supporting my channel. Uh, if you have any comments down below, uh, please feel free. Whether it's good or bad, I'd love to hear all the comments out there. Um, so yeah, uh, if you've liked the video, don't, don't forget to give me a big like thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and last but not least uh, in the description below you'll find a, a, a link to our discord group and that discord group is uh, for everyone um, where we share information about penny stocks uh, not just penny stocks uh, I say penny stocks but dividends blue chip okay but it's important when you're coming into the world be open-minded and again number two is the key diversify and number three okay diversify and do your own diligence i can't stress that enough guys speak to you soon have a great evening